A to make sure you can continue offering credit. Do it before the end of November and you'll get a 30% discount on the fee. To register, simply search FCA Clicked. Consumer Credit Licensing. Have you clicked yet? LBC 97.3. This is Ask Boris. Mayor of London, Boris Johnson takes your calls with Nick Ferrari at breakfast. Call 0845 6060973. -60 Text 84850. Tweet at LBC 973. Ask Boris on London's biggest conversation, LBC 97.3. Yes. Yeah, hi folks, it's Boris Johnson. It's Tuesday, the 5th of November. It's 9 o'clock and we are bringing you another edition of Ask Boris on LBC 97.3. If you've got any complaints about the way things are going in London, any ideas, any any praise, any pipette drops of praise you wish to administer to City Hall or TfL or anybody else, then they'd be very, very welcome. Any questions now please ring up on 0845 6060 or email boris at lbc.co.uk don't forget you can also watch ask boris on in high definition on the website lbc.co.uk now just before i go to charles in tottenham who's on the line i just want to say folks there is an initiative we got going for tree week and we are appealing for volunteers who want to beautify our city by expanding the canopy of leaves and we need 12,000 trees planted in the week of 23rd November to the 1st of December we need 400 volunteers please if you are interested sign up on volunteerteenlondon.gov.uk there's the plug get on pl uh, plant more beautiful trees. Mayor, you're not we, objecting to planting trees I think already it's a are marvelous you? idea where do people go where, where will they have to go to do this across the city there'll be lots of places where we'll be planting beautiful and, 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 and subsidence friendly trees these right. trees will not cause they they're going to be absolutely beautiful it's part of our plan as some some listeners may remember to increase tree cover across the capital by five percent by 2025 so We're, what sort of trees are subsidence friendly trees what what what, what are they they're trees that are planted in the, no, right, but, but in the are, right place. No, but are they ash? <laughs> are they willow? Are they? What there are, are all they? sorts of there. You don't ash, know what sort willow, of trees beech, they are. oak, oh, they hazel. Are. There will be there will be all sorts of beautiful, lovely. And there is subsidence fr friendly. Are they? Ash, provided, wood. provided they're planted in the right. place. Ah, this is the key. The, they've got to be planted in the right place. And and quite seriously, we do make sure yep. that it's done uh, in such a way Brilliant. to allow the roots to spread. Without affecting uh, adjacent property. How lovely! How many volunteers? So four hundred volunteers. Four hundred volunteers. And that we website need. again. Whilst, one last the time, website, Mr. Mayor. website again. I will give you www.volunteerteam.london.gov.uk. Best of luck. If you didn't get it, just go to lbc.co.uk. We'll put a link on there, Mr. Mayor, for your first call. Thank you very much. And we're going now to Charles in Tottenham. Good morning, Boris. Good morning, Charles. All right. Uh, um, my my question is this. Why is it necessary to keep increasing the transport fare all the time? People are struggling. People are having a, a problem yeah. getting into work as it is. And, I mean, why can't you just reduce the fares for at least two years and then, well, maybe think about it again? I don't know. Well, Charles, I think it's a very good question. It's a fair question because it's one that loads of people ask me. And you've got to, I've got to accept as mayor that people are facing increasing pressures on their outgoings and transport is a major, major cost for us in London. And yes, of course, I want to bear down as much as I can on fares. You, you ask why do we increase and why historically have they been increased? And I, if you look, if you look at the graph of fare increases, it's more or less continuous. You even out all the the kinks, the fare, the the, the 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 sudden cuts and then the sudden hikes again. It's more or less a continuous increase over the last 20, 30, 40 years. And that is because we have a Victorian system of transport infrastructure which does require upgrading. So even though uh, people are paying, as it were, for their own ride, they're also, I'm afraid, we're also all also paying for the improvement of the system and uh, for, for making sure that we, we put in new signalling, new tracks, stuff that would otherwise cause uh, the, uh, the whole transport network to explode. We're seeing increasing ridership both on the tube and on the buses. Uh, the tube's carrying more people than it's ever carried before. It's carried far more people than it was originally uh, designed to do. And unless you put in uh, new stuff, you will you will have a, a serious paralysis. So that's the reason why... His Charles, let's get a response from uh, you. But I want to assure oh, Charles, I want okay. to assure Charles, that no, I haven't taken a decision yet about 
uh, about fares this year. I really am going to do my utmost to keep the uh, keep the, them as low as I possibly can next year. And I do understand people's feelings. Quick response from Rachel. All I hope is this, Mr. Mayor, is that the, the, the thing that you're saying about the upgrade is not short-term. We've had so much over the years yeah. of short-term decisions, short-term is thought, and, you know, it's not good enough. It's got to be long-term if it's going to be done. Well, I, I absolutely agree with that. And I think that that is why, I'm afraid, we, we as as a city and as 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 fair payers and as taxpayers, we've had to take some short-term pain for what is really a big long-term benefit. The Victorians thought long-term. They put in fantastic tube networks. Unfortunately, they didn't build them big enough. Uh, and, we, we're, and we're now suffering from the, the problem that we're trying to put air conditioning on tube tunnels which aren't uh, designed for it. We're trying to put new signalling in places where it hasn't been restored since the 1930s in some places. And uh, that really is, is an expense that you've got to incur now. You've got to, you've got to spend that money now or else you spend, as you, as you rightly say, Charles, you end up spending a lot more later on. All right, Charles, thank you for that. More calls, Mr Mayor. That one thank you. Can we go to Fat- Sorry, Fatima now in Sudbury, please? Yes, hello. Good morning, Good morning Mr Fatima. Mayor. Good morning. Uh, yes, my question is, um, it's in regards to the uh, PIMS, is it you call it, um, the Antelope uh, Terror. Uh, t- t- pimps. T- pimps. Yeah, pimps. T-PIMS. That's the it. T-PIMS. Yeah, T-PIMS. The new control yeah. orders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on yeah. you go, Fatima. Yeah. Um, what I'm asking the mayor is, uh, there have been flaws in, 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 this, in that system um, a while ago, been rectified. But isn't it about time the government look, looks at it again, if you could have these people escaping the... Surveillance. This is in the light, of course, of the, the, Muhammad the, 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 Ahmed Muhammad in Acton, absolutely. believed to have gone into a mosque dressed in Western-style clothing, emerged in a burqa, and now apparently on the run. But the Home Secretary says we've got nothing to worry about. Mr Mayor. Well, I think Fatima is, is completely right in questioning whether TPIMs are working at the moment in the way that uh, they should be working, the way that we want them to work. And plainly, what do you think? If, a fellow can, if a fellow can get into a burqa and evade his invigilators in the way that this uh, this uh, that Mr. Mohammed has done, then uh, I think we clearly need to look at how it is working, and I understand people's feelings. But the the, the most important thing is anybody who knows uh, the whereabouts of uh, Mohammed, Mr. Mohammed, should bring him very very speedily to justice. Do you think T Pims are working? Well, plainly they're not working in the way that we would like them to work, in the sense that this guy Mohammed was able, as everybody knows, to. Flee in, in absurd circumstances. Second in ten and, months, and uh, there must be questions about whether uh, we should be tougher in the way that we administer it's these. Reported uh, one of the architects of TPIMS is Nick Clegg. Well, you know, I mean, there are there are there is politics behind this. If you remember, Nick, if it was there was a system of control orders brought in by the was, Labour government, which, was, which, which the was, Conservatives which wanted was, to which, strengthen which, up, and which, Lib Dems effectively which was in place. watered down, and we we'll ended up with a T PIM courtesy of Nick Clegg, Mister Mayor. Well, there there are definitely coalition politics here, and I'm sure that there will be very lively discussions going on now between uh, Theresa May, who is I'm sure very very much in favour of the strongest possible measures and her colleagues in the Liberal Democrats and I'm sure she will be saying to them listen uh, this is ludicrous we are having we are having too many of these types of evasion uh, the the TPIM system um, perhaps should be strengthened I'm sure that is a point that Theresa will be making and one of the key aspects of the old control order was one of geography in that you were moved away from your, where had been your home under a TPIM for the purpose of debate you can sure, come back to sure. Acton where do and, you say and, should, and, and I think should, diff- should you be frozen out from your, your think, where think, you live or look, should you be allowed to return it is, it, it, is, it is you and I have discussed before and, and listeners will know this is a very difficult problem there are there are thousands right. but I'm a, a small number of I live in Blackheath yeah. am I set in Birmingham or am I allowed to come back to my base in I think in an I depending on how much of a risk you are deemed to pose in my view you should be deprived of contact with the networks that might help you in whatever end uh, to whatever end you desire so there might be that you, you, that your this guy Mohammed was obviously helped to escape I don't believe for a minute that he did it on his own uh, someone helped him he was in contact with people uh, who were sympathizers uh, in his uh, you know, if, if a group of of uh, whatever they are, you know, they, whatever they happen to, to believe in, and uh, I think that they sh- that characters such as him, 
uh, who, even if he doesn't pose an immediate threat to this country, it is plain that he is a danger. Characters such as him should be uh, more closely invigilated than they currently are being. And I'm sure that that is a point that Theresa May will be taking up very actively. And lastly on this, some of your Conservative colleagues in the in the party were suggesting that we should now look at banning the burqa. Now, with your rich and colourful lineage, I would imagine I, you'll have strong views on that. Well, I, I don't believe in banning things, uh, ban, you know, banning items of, of dress uh, altogether. I certainly think that it's a bit much to ask teachers or, or judges to deal with people who uh, have their faces covered. That seems to me to be not how we do things in this country. And I think it's absolutely reasonable to say that uh, face veils, burkas, whatever, should not be acceptable in state-funded classrooms in this country, and nor should they be acceptable in the system of British justice. But a knee-jerk reaction that it would appear a, a terrorist suspect is on the run because he dressed in a book, the idea then we should ban it is something I don't think... Well, I mean, you might, as, well, you, can't, you might as well ban ski masks or, you know, balaclavas or whatever. I mean, I, you know, the, 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 I think, you, I think you're, you're, you're starting to get into uh, right. to ludicrous territory there. OK. Um, have you been told by police last year on this, was Mohammed working alone? I, I haven't been uh, given... Uh, I, obviously, I had a, a general briefing uh, when we knew that uh, he had escaped. We had a general briefing to that effect. But uh, I, I, haven't, I haven't had a, any particular briefings about uh, whether he was working alone or not. So the Metron police haven't told the mayor whether he's solo or whether he's part of a gang? I, I haven't been given that information. You find that rather surprising. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not certain whether they know that information or not. You haven't asked? Uh, I am, uh, at the moment, uh, content to let the Metropolitan Police, let the security services Wouldn't get on know? get on with it without ventilating uh, sure, too much this on, is the, a terror on the terror suspect on the loose L, in on London, the LBC and you, you don't seek to ask, is, is he alone? Or does, is, does he have other operatives? You wouldn't seek to ask that. Well, it, it's, as I, from, what you've, from what I've said, it's pretty clear that I believe, and my hunch is that he is... Uh, not operating alone, but I, as I say, I well, don't have. I don't have. I don't have. I don't. Well, you, simply, simply, simply that uh, it seems very unlikely to me that somebody could be uh, uh, able to escape in a burqa in the way that he did from a mosque uh, without some form of assistance. Now, I stress that I don't have any police confirmation of this, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I uh, nor if I did, nor if I did, would I discuss it with you on the airwaves. Do you watch Homeland? I have watched Homeland. <laughs> do you watch Homeland? I find it. I wish I knew what was going on, but that's a whole separate conversation. I do watch Homeland. Okay, uh, can we go to Adam in Chessington? Yeah, hi there. Um, I'm calling up with regards to the um, comments that have been reported that you've made about Heathrow, that that should just be bulldozed um, and housing put there and the Boris Island should be built. Um, what are your thoughts about the sort of 40,000, 50,000 people that work at Heathrow? Um, either well, on the airport, around the airport. Are you happy that those people would all be out of jobs? Well, uh, for the first most important point is that uh, they wouldn't necessarily be out of jobs because the, the site at Heathrow is a fantastic place for redevelopment. You've got an area the size of Kensington and Chelsea. You've got four tube stations that, unlike any other regeneration site in London in the sense that uh, it's already got fantastic transport links. You've got Crossrail there. You've got the Heathrow Express. Uh, West London has long been a powerhouse of the economy, uh, long before a, a pa passenger aviation was even invented. And uh, I, I really, really think that the, these types of uh, w warning are, are grossly overdone. And what would happen is I think there would be a simultaneous uh, regeneration both in uh, West London and in East London, because the results of building a new airport would be the next, as we think, an, an extra three hundred and five thousand. What would go into West London, Mr. Mayor? What, what, if, if you took out air, air lines and airports, what, what's going to go in there? Well, you could have. This is this is one of the most vibrant sectors in the UK economy. You could have high tech manufacturing. You could have. Uh, you could have a university campuses. You could have any number of things. And indeed, one of the things that we are going to be But if doing Adam's right, there's 40,000... Is it 40... Adam and Chesson, are 40,000 people out of work, did you say? No, that's not that um, completely there's, untrue. There's at least 36,000 36, that work on the airport, um, either in the actual airport itself, hotels around it. There's several other jobs, sort of logistics jobs, linked around the airport. And a lot of those jobs are skilled jobs that are solely sort of skilled in the aviation industry. Yes. So those, you're, you're suggesting that those people just go and sit and work in a 
sort of um, manufacturing plant um, no, doing no, a job the, that no, they the... wouldn't enjoy. And a lot no. of people at Heathrow are passionate about the job that they do, and they do yes. it well. They, they do. And you're and, suggesting they're just out of the and, job. And no, because I think that mm. many, many of those jobs would... Uh, you know, th- well, this this process, by the way, would not begin for at least fifteen years. It, the, the the actual moment of of changeover to uh, to a, uh, a a new airport in the east wouldn't begin for at least fifteen years. It would be ample time for people to prepare. So if you're for that. a twenty five year old and you want to work in the airline game, is it okay to go and work at Heathrow then? Of course it is, because oh. you've got you, you'll have a you'll have a you'll have a long career there. You'll have pl- you'll pick up plenty. But in fifteen of years, you might have to move and, to completely and, the other side and, of town. You might have to move, or you might have to seek another job in another sector, which will be, by the way, uh, I think, abundantly uh, generated by the 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 kind of activity that we will see on that site. And the the net benefit to the UK of doing what we're proposing is in the, order, the region of six hundred and fifty billion pounds. And I really think, if you look at the long term and you look at what is happening at Heathrow, the the, the tragedy is that we haven't done it earlier. Yes, I, I mean, you, the, the point that Adam and Chessington makes is, is, is right in this sense that, of course, there will be dislocation and, of course, uh, there will be uncertainty. But we can't go on with a system uh, that gives Britain an in- inadequate hub airport. And what I'm proposing, I think, would be a massive, massive economic shot in the arm, both for West London and for East London. Newspapers agree you gave a barnstorming performance yesterday that the CBI conference that you attended and you gave an address. Uh, this is what you told people, and indeed tried to play them some aircraft noises. Give, 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 us, give us 57 decibels. There you go. There you go. That's what it's... That is what that is what it's going to be like uh, over parts of the city that have never had it for never experienced noise like. Now g- give me now, let, let's let's have let's, let's have the quiet engine. <laughs> that, that is very good. Let's have it again. <laughs> In fact, let's have it every ninety seconds. <laughs> let's have it every ninety seconds over parts of London that never experienced it before. Why not? That's what's going to happen. Mr. Mayor, I couldn't tell the difference. Well, there isn't much of a difference, frankly, to those who are experiencing aircraft noise at close quarters. And I so, think what was is, the it, point you were trying to make there? It is uh, the point I'm trying to make is really a point of, of political judgment. And my view is that no matter what people, what how strongly business may want us to get on with building a new runway urgently at. Heathrow. I think it is just undeliverable. There are too many people in London who suffer from excess aircraft noise for any government to be able to do that because it means more aircraft noise. Whichever way you cut it, it means more noise. It means actually it means more ground pollution as well. And I think in the 21st century with the uh, culture we have of litigation and of people valuing the quality of life and wanting ever greater improvements to the quality of their lives, it is very difficult to imagine a Western democratic government being able to impose on its people an adverse environmental impact on that scale. I just cannot see how we can do it. So we go to this can do hu- island in the estuary, do we? I, no, I, th- I think, sorry, I should have said to uh, Adam, I, we don't have to go for that solution. Where do we go? Uh, I think there are TfL think there are three good options as either Stansted or the two estuary sites. Uh, the uh, one at the Isle of Grain, which the Foster and Partners have done a lot, a lot of work on, is a fantastic opportunity for regeneration. It would produce, uh, as I say, hundreds of thousands of jobs. It would be a, you'd create a logistics hub in the east that would knock spots off the rest of Europe. It would really put uh, it put Britain in the lead. What about the as fog the, as on the, the Thames? Some of my emailers were saying when that, we started this conversation. No, that's that. Uh, that is that is. Uh, we don't believe that is a a problem. There's there's fog everywhere, and there's, you know, there's fog at there's fog at Heathrow. And the, the, Probably the risk- not as often as there's fog. I mean, London City has to suspend every now and again because of fog, doesn't it? And that's on the Thames. We we have looked into it. We don't believe that oh, the fog okay. is, a, is a material operational obstacle. Go Eileen in Croydon. Oh, good morning, Mayor. Thank you very oh, much for good taking morning. my call. Not at all. Um, I've tried on so many occasions to talk about this issue. Um, I know everyone's really concerned about the gas and electricity prices, etc. 
Um, I was lucky enough, I had a letter from Eon to say that they're imposing a standing charge on my bill and it would, in fact, add about £17 a year why to they, my bill. Why are they imposing a standing charge, Eileen? Well, the reality is it's going to be well over £100 a year. But when I've spoken to friends and colleagues, I said, have you had a standing charge imposed on your bills? When they all looked, yes, they had. Now, I spoke to British Gas and they said it's a charge that the government have imposed. Now... If people what are is your direct question well, I think to the mayor? I think Eileen my needs to know what my this direct is. question is: If the government so are saying they're trying to get the gas and electricity prices down to help people to be able to heat their homes, why has the government imposed a standing charge on all these bills? I think it's a little bit out of the mayor's well, no, room, but I'm sure you'll have uh, a view. What we will do, um, Eileen, is we we will make sure we get the answer to you. If, what will be very helpful is if is if without. Yep. Um, you know, breaching any confidentiality, you're able to give us a copy of what of, of your okay. bill, so we can understand what exactly it is that the government thinks it's it's doing. That can we go? And, thanks, Eileen. Can we go to just Michael? Just before we do, sorry, just no, not at no. all. Just while well, we're on the subject of energy bills, we've heard from many prominent politicians what needs to be done about the big six. We're going to hear from Ed Miliband today that in fact it's the big seven because the he will claim the coalition government is effectively in cahoots with the power companies. I appreciate again a little out of your remit as London Mayor, but I'm no, sure you but have I, a view. Look, I, I think it's the same. It's the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the same problem. As, as housing supply, the 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 biggest issue facing my electorate, facing Londoners, is the cost of housing. Uh, the second biggest is probably all this cost of living stuff and 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 energy and and now the the answer to the housing crisis is to build hundreds of thousands more homes, get more homes into uh, high quality homes, uh, affordable homes for London. The answer to the energy crisis is to build more generation. It's absolute crazy. We spent twenty years uh, creating a load of. Uh, blooming wind farms that wouldn't pull the skin off a rice pudding and produce a tiny quantity of our energy needs. We should have started 20 years ago with the nuclear stuff. Uh, it is a disaster that we didn't labour pussyfooted around for ages out of sheer neuralgia about ele- about nuclear. And we should have gone for it then. Uh, we should go for it now. The solution to our energy uh, problem is to get on and increase supply. And, and I'm afraid, I think, that what Labour is endlessly trying to say that you can have your cake and eat it, and that you can uh, somehow uh, cut fuel bills, cut, get the energy companies to uh, disgorge all this money without jeopardising their ability to invest in new plants. That strikes me intuitively as being as being wrong. And, and in the end, it's, it's fool's gold, because all you do is you reduce our ability as a country to get the, the cheaper supply of energy that we need. And, and so what happens? The, the bills go up down the line. Um, when did you last switch? I, I leave all that kind of key strategic decision entirely to higher powers. How much is your energy bill per quarter or per month? You, I'm happy to supply those details to you. you <laughs> later don't know. Later You've later. no idea. I leave, so I, I, leave, I leave such things you, to higher powers. You power. genuinely have no idea the price of your energy. Well, I'm, I'm sure it's outrageous, but I, I can't give it to you. I'm happy to give it to you later. I don't, I don't, have, I don't have, have it on the tip of my... I haven't come into this... Come into this uh, £128 a month, if you want to ask me, by the way. Quite happy to tell you. Nick, well, Clegg, I, Nick Clegg wouldn't tell me either last week. I don't know what it is with you politicians. Why you won't tell us how much your energy bills are? Because I'm sure yours isn't being paid by the taxpayer, unlike Nadim Zahawi. But we move my, on. My energy bill is certainly not being paid by the taxpayer. Right. I'm, sure, I'm sure it's exorbitant, my energy bill. Uh, and, and, but what I would say is that... The only way to be sure to speak into the the microphone. Sorry, sorry, the only way to get it down seriously in in the long term is to increase our ability to generate uh, generate cleaner electricity. Let's move on with other calls. Clean and abundant electricity. Move on with other calls. We have Michael in New Cross. You're through to the mayor. Go ahead, Michael. Michael. Hello. Good morning, Boris. Good morning. And good morning, Nick. Very fantastic show you're doing today. Oh, thank you. Um, Right. The the reason I'm calling you, Boris, is uh, I'm on a a, a totally different subject regarding. Uh, TFL regarding parents and toddlers pushchairs oh, yes. uh, getting on buses. Um, as you understand, it's a major, major problem with getting uh, the parents and of toddlers and pushchairs on the on the buses. They're always waiting a long time to get on the buses. There's no space for them, and they're actually having to wait for ages and ages to get yeah, on the bus. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm been thinking for quite some time now regarding the business venture, regarding maybe providing a service purely for the parents and toddlers only whereby a, a bus service will be provided for them where only the, the, the children and their parents are able to get on the bus. Now, 
the thing so you is, have a, so, you have a children only bus, a school bus, is what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, correct. Yeah, a full bus, purely for them. And obviously, the bus need to be the double decker bus or single bus need to be, um, let's say, revamped or refurbished so it accommodate the prams and the push chairs and right. the parents on one side. Okay, Michael. Um, what do you think? That, what do you think about the idea about that? that he's got problems in in London for that. Well, Michael, I think that, that my, my instinctive answer is I think what that would do, and I don't want to, I don't want to pour cold, cold water on your scheme. My instinctive answer is all that would do would be to increase the number of vehicles on the road because I think yep, we'd probably fair. still have to maintain our existing bus fleet, yep. and, and then you'd have. Uh, you know the Michael uh, fleet of toddler buses that uh, if, yep. you know coming coming around behind. I'm not certain that would be ideal for our traffic mm-hmm. management. Can I can I recommend that uh, you 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 take it up with uh, Isabel Dedring, my deputy mayor for transport, who is mustard keen on all such new schemes and will be happy to look at it in well, detail. Well, I can l- happily tell you, Mr. Mayor, that Deputy Mayor Isabel Dedring is in that chair on Friday when well, she there you go to review the morning Super. newspapers. So, Michael, if you'd like to get us a, a fairly lengthy email for Isabel because. I I know she'd want all points covered, please. So as long as you like, get it across to one of my team, and Isabel, we'll make sure. Isabel is a very quick study, but she likes no full matter detail. how long the email. No, she likes she, full detail. She, I know she will get through it. And often she's happy to provide uh, a weekend contact number if she's really excited by a particular idea. <laughs> right, we move on to questions via the email, if that's all right, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Robert, have, sorry, sorry, we're going to get to Mary in Greenford. Oh, okay. Then Let's we'll do get a Mary in Greenford. Yes, Absolutely. you can. Mary Greenford. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Good morning. Good morning, Boris. Yes, Thank you. I'm fine. Thank you. My question is. When you're on the bus and the bus says it's going to Yedding or whatever the destination is, yeah. and then all of a sudden it decides, I'm only going halfway, you have to get off the bus and get on another one. When you get on the other bus, you are still having £1.40 taken off your Oyster card, oh. and it actually causes havoc. Is now, there no is... way that you can tap out with a T registered on your yes. Oyster card to say now, Mary, this is a transfer? I, Mary, I'm fairly certain that this is a problem we can solve. And I'm fairly certain that if you are forced because the bus terminates early to tap out and then to tap in again for, a, for another, uh, or if you're forced to get off and then to tap in again for another uh, bus journey, uh, I think that you can be compensated. And I, I'm, so what you, all you, please, please, please get onto our website and you will be refunded that £1.40. I'm absolutely certain of that. Mary? Okay, thank you very much. There we are. Let us know how you get on. We'll be sure to give you a call. If I can just come to a couple of questions that come in via email. Robert in Enfield. I am a serving firefighter. Why does everything always seem to be so one-sided when the media reports on firefighters? The true facts don't get reported. Well, Robert, uh, I I don't know which, which side... Uh, you mean, but I, well, I, well, I think, think it's, I sense he's a serving firefighter. I certainly perhaps. think I certainly think that it is the case that um, it, you don't you don't hear enough about the amazing job that firefighters do. I think people don't realise the extent to which fires have come down in London and and deaths from fire have come down in London. I think I think it is well, Londoners would be uh, but be amazed by some of the statistics, even though the population of the city has grown so much, and you would have thought that the risk of, of fire had grown so much. Actually. By education, by right. prompt response, uh, firefighters, the, the LFB does an amazing job. What about when they uh, they left the scene of that fire in Dagenham on Friday during well, their industrial action? Well, you know, I thought that was obviously a a pity. I thought it was a pity, and I'm very pity. glad. That, I'm very glad it that, was wrong, wasn't that it? everybody uh, was safe and that uh, the the blaze was brought under control. But, but I it think was it, wrong, wasn't yeah, it? As I said at the time. It was wrong. You I, I, oh. I, 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 you know, I, I, th- I, I certainly think that you know most firefighters they they, they go into the business uh, to save lives, uh, to stop fires. Uh, they do a fantastic job, and they deserve the appreciation of Londoners. Michael O'Hare, why are rickshaws allowed to put the public in danger? Uninsured, no vetting of the operators who could be legal or could be illegal. They're allowed to block bus lanes while touting for fares, which can amount to any amount they choose it to be. Do something about it for visitors to London. Uh, well, uh, Michael, I, I, sorry, is that... That, that's the next caller. Yes, this, Michael, this we is are Michael doing O'Hare, something. Yes. We are Michael. This is, as you know, this requires primary. This actually requires statutory legislation to uh, deal with the the rickshaws. I, I am myself. Uh, you know, I'm a libertarian. I think that on the whole, if people are able want to apply their trade on the public highway, uh, they should be allowed. I happen to think also that rickshaws are a menace, and they get in. Certainly, speaking as a cyclist, they push you out into the traffic where you don't want to be. They go at, at, at the wrong speed, and I can perfectly well understand the what, what I very, very often hear from the taxi trade 
that uh, you know they they don't see why they're on the road. We are taking steps to uh, to regulate them. Uh, I cannot, however, promise uh, an immediate solution. This 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 is a this is a difficult matter of liberty, and there are MPs in the House of Commons who stand up and and say, you know, these uh, it, it is people's sovereign right to make use of the Queen's highway in in the way that uh, they that they choose and to ply their trade in the way that they do but i'm sensing if you had the necessary power they'd probably shut down overnight I, I we would we i mean it's, I'm, i mean i don't want to be hostile to, to to the ritual trade but it is it is my view that they are an encumbrance on the roads all right stay where you are we're coming back to you in just a second mr mayor you're listening to lbc 97.3 it's ask boris with mayor boris johnson with me nick for right breakfast J- robin southall no we're going <laughs> we're going why can't we get a robin southall because if you look there mr mayor you'll see what the time is it's 9 30 and news now on lbc okay, 97.3 right. <laughs> Hello, good morning. London Mayor Boris Johnson's told LBC 97.3 new style terrorism prevention orders aren't working. It follows the disappearance of Mohammed Ahmed Mohammed, who escaped surveillance by officers in Acton by changing into a burqa. Boris also told us he doesn't think the 27 year old was acting alone. I don't believe for a minute that he did it on his own. Uh, someone helped him. He was in contact with people uh, who were sympathisers, and uh, I think that they sh- that characters such as him. Uh, who, uh, even if he doesn't p- pose an immediate threat to this country, it is plain that he is a danger. Characters such as him should be uh, more closely invigilated than they currently are being. Bosses from the three biggest payday loan firms are defending the way they do business. Representatives from Wonga, Quickquid and Mr Lender are being questioned by a House of Commons committee about how they treat customers. Marks & Spencer has seen its clothing and homeware sales fall again. They're down 1.3% between July and September. Meanwhile, Primark's annual sales have jumped by more than a fifth. London's travel, the A4 is now closed into town between the Hogarth roundabout and the Hammersmith flyover after an accident with delays now back onto the elevated section on the M4. At 9.15, the FTSE was down 6 at 67.57. And London's weather, wet and cloudy this morning, but turning drier and brighter by this afternoon. Highs of 11 Celsius. Right now at Canary Wharf, it's 10 degrees. LBC 97.3, it's 9.31. LBC 97.3. This is Ask Boris. Mayor of London, Boris Johnson takes your calls with Nick Ferrari at breakfast. Call 0845 6060 text 84850, tweet at LBC973. Ask Boris on London's biggest conversation, LBC 97.3. Rob, we're going now to Rob in Southall, who's been delayed unacceptably. Rob, how, how are you? Morning, Mr. Mayor. Very, very good. Um, the question I wanted to ask is, this, you know the living wage? Yes. You, you've got people who are running businesses who can't afford to pay. They're literally on the breadline. They're paying yeah. their staff the minimum, and they, they're running good businesses. They're not being well paid themselves. Why don't you do something where you cap the money a, a manager can earn above someone below them? Because I don't know if you... Yeah. Uh, I'll give you a stat. These people are earning a million pounds at the top of these big companies. That is the same as 20 levels yeah. where everyone is earning 10% more than the person below them. Yeah. And that, that's not fair. No, Rob, is, so what, what you're I saying think, is incredibly yeah. interesting. Actually, I met a, um, I was talking to somebody yesterday who was making this very, very point to me about the, the how differentials have expanded in the last 20 years. And it really, it, it is noticeable. And she, was, she said she, would be, she was in accounts and she'd been in accounts for 20 years. And she'd seen how... Uh, how wage rates and pay had just diverged like two different planetary systems so you had people at the top earning absolutely shed loads and people uh, lower down really not seeing the kind of progression that that you would want um i i don't know this is something that newspapers have campaigned against that loads of people uh campaigning it is very very difficult to to solve in a free market system but what you i think they're actually they're actually voted uh, I'm, i'm not sure how it went but they were voting on it in Switzerland the other day, and it was typically aimed at UBS. That's but, very interesting. Um, yeah, it was one of these things. You know, and I, I, don't, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know, Rob. I mean, I think what you're raising is, is an issue that I think is in, in everybody's minds. It is very, very hard to know how to, to deal with it without imposing, you know, crazy kind of wage restraints. But what you can, well, the reason I believe in the living wage and, and is, is not to impose it on firms that can't afford it. And I understand what you're saying about uh, the difficulty of everybody, everybody paying it. But there are plenty of firms that can afford to pay it. And there are plenty of firms in London that can afford to pay it and are 
not paying it. And firms yeah, so that, what pay, you can do is and firms make, that yeah. pay out stonking bonuses and stonking dividends and goodness yeah, knows Yeah, so maybe what. you could sort it on revenue. You know, if the company was earning above a certain amount of revenue or profit or paying a certain amount of dividends, then they could do it. Because I'll tell you another thing. I absolutely believe, you know, vehemently that this is, this is the reason why, that, why the house prices are so high. Because so many of these people buying, and you know, with these million pounds, they're yeah. buying 10, 20 normal houses and renting them out. And you know, and this is, uh, this is one of the actual main causes of the prices being so high. Well, I think, I mean, what you're certainly right in saying, Rob, is that uh, the presence of a lot of uh, money in London is a cause in the, uh, of international money is one of the factors that is uh, that is helping to boost house prices. Nobody could conceivably deny that. But the, the answer, in my view, is just to continue to build the, the affordable homes that Londoners need. Oh, no, I, I, no, if, no. You, if you tried to, I mean, if, imagine if we, it, what, what would we say to people? Okay, what we need to do is cut everybody's house price by 40%, okay? Now, how's that going to feel to everybody who has equity in their property in London, mi- several millions of people? Uh, they are not going to be too chuffed. Uh, it, is, it, is, it is very, very difficult difficult to produce exactly the effect that we all, exactly the economic effect that we all want to see. What we all, everybody wants to see is their own house remaining as valuable as it is, but all other houses somehow coming down in price so that their, their kids can afford to uh, to get on the property ladder. And it, I'm afraid it is, it's very, very difficult to square the circle. The right. only answer, the only, there is an answer, the answer is to build many, many more affordable homes for Londoners. Uh, Rob, on a, thank you, Rob. On a related email, please ask Boris what he thinks of people from abroad buying up central London. It's being turned into a ghost town. We can't get key workers to live here. Why don't we restrict foreign ownership to new properties or a percentage of flats in yeah. any development? Well, you, you know, agree I, with those restrictions? I, I understand what, compl- I mean, as I was saying to Rob, I, I really understand why people are saying this yes, and why w- people Would you feel- agree with those restrictions? I think it's very difficult. For instance, I mean, a lot of foreign ownership turns out to be Irish. You know, uh, okay, we're, we're going to say that you can't, the Irish people can't well, own property. You know, what, I don't what, know if they're flocking here in the same way that, say, the Russians or. or, uh, or probably many more. Many more. I, 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 mean, I wager you there's many more properties owned by Irish uh, no, citizens. It's currently London. being bought, though, I would say. Isn't the, the big well, money coming I in wouldn't... from Russia and from Saudi well, Actually, it's very interesting. If you, look at the, if you look at the figures, it is very striking that across London, I think the number of properties being sold to uh, international buyers, I mean, it's non UK citizens, is about 6% at the moment. Really? Uh, uh, yeah, which is what it's be, which is what it was in uh, 1990. So the, there is a, but there, I think what, what, where your caller, where your caller is email, right, yeah. it's in your emailer is right. Is it there is a fact there is thing there is something going on in in zone one, uh, as happened in the 1970s when you had big uh, investments from uh, from the Middle East. Uh, in the 1980s, you've seen it again. There is unquestionably a lot of foreign money coming in. Now right. the question is, and do we as a city say you know bog off we don't want we don't want this money uh this is not good for us we don't want you buying our properties because the i understand why people say that but the difficulty is that what you do is you make it more difficult to go ahead for instance with huge pro- like battersea which is going to produce thousands and thousands of new homes how would that have got off the ground if it wasn't for for international investment. Yes. Do you see what I mean? Which you uh, assiduously and, courted and, and delivered, and, and, has and, to be and, said. And that is, so that is the dilemma for us. Right. Now, well, I, 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 th- I understand what people are saying. Uh, in an, I, and I'm, I'm, if I could think of, a, if I could think of a painless, I'd be totally honest with you, if I could think of a painless way, a painless way of, uh, you know, mulcting, of yep. mulcting, of taxing, of getting uh, some of the value from uh, foreign investors. Way of doing what was that word? Mulcting is the word I use. I was get tax. I mean, I mean, if I could think of a painless way. What's mulcting mean? It means taxing. It's a Why sort don't of, you just say taxing? Well, no, it's okay. Taxing then. Yeah. If I could think of a t- what painless. Have, what have you done? Swallowed a dictionary overnight? No, it's a perfectly good. I thought, come on, we're, we're here to we're here to use it. Come on, why this is a this is a very distinguished and and, well, and, and grown up show. Why can't why can't we why can't we why can't we use why can't we use the old elaborate word? I love, and, the, I love and, I'm loving elaborate words, and we shall. But just moving on to other words. This no, but you, I, I, you're, you're you're closing me off on a pr- well, my point, which is actually more interesting. You lost the room when you talked about malting. But anyway, make your point. Taxing. My point is that if I could think of a painless way 
of uh, getting revenue from all the foreign buyers who are coming from London without yes. deterring them, without setting up, putting up a big sign saying uh, closed to business in, in, in Britain, in London, I would do it. But okay. I, it's, it's very hard to do. Right, talking about importance of foreign investment and foreign interest, this was you last month. It says Jung Guo. That means central kingdom, Chinese China. Not particularly impressive. We've it, been, what we've do you been, mean? Oh, that's correct. Some, right. Well, we've been doing some Mandarin. I'm going to now hand you a piece oh, of paper. I want to see if you agree with the following three phrases. And there they are for you in uh, in Mandarin. Here's number one. Do you agree with that, Mr. Mayor? London is yiga. Yiga means... Um, that's impressive. In a, y- y- a nigger, there's nigger and, and yiga. Yiga means here, I think. Or, uh, or London is a city of global importance. Yeah, okay, I agree with that. Okay, number two. As a Yes or no? Yes or no? I'm going to I'm doing a great job as mayor. You decide to pass. <laughs> this lastly. Yes or no? It means, could you pass the marmalade, please? <laughs> it means I want to be Prime Minister. <laughs> we thought we might get you on that one, but never mind. Instead, let's go to more calls. Okay, right. Pass the marmalade. Might be the same, who knows? <laughs> Mr Mayor. Uh, Chloe in Mill Hill, please. Morning, Mr Mayor. Good morning. Um, I'm currently here with my my friend Isabel, and Isabel and I were wondering whether you believe there's still any value in studying Latin in modern society. We're currently in a Latin lesson, and we're wondering if you still believe there is. Uh, and, um, if you're you in the lesson things, now, Chloe, are you? Yes, but right. our Latin teacher has encouraged us to, speak, to ask well, can you. Well, can I just congratulate <laughs> your, your, your Latin teacher on everything that uh, he or she is, is what doing? What is the teacher there? Yes, yeah, she is. He's listening. <laughs> Well, hello, hello, Mr. Latin teacher. Thank you very much for what you're doing. Uh, You are engaged in a fantastic, good work. You are keeping going what I think is the most, the great fountainhead of Western civilization, which is study of of Latin and and Greek uh, classics. Um, And you'll be you're opening the eyes of young people in Mill Hill to a great discipline that will help them with loads of other languages or help them with a, a provide a key not just by the way to uh, to the latinate languages to french and spanish and portuguese and what have you but also to understanding many many other languages and and a great logical tool but uh, but furthermore you'll be unlocking the wonders of the greatest treasury of uh, literature uh, poetry philosophy that that exists. And, Chloe, why did you? You're a 16 year old schoolgirl. What uh, what made you decide to take up Latin? Um, well, it's got such a large relevance to our language and to so other many European languages. And me and my friend were wondering if you would try to increase the popularity of Latin, bring back the popularity that Latin was enjoyed in yes. London schools. Yes. Well, I w- actually, uh, Chloe, I'm glad I'm glad you raised that because we have we have a. Uh, we are big supporters of a scheme called Love Latin. Uh, we have a uh, recruitment scheme run through Friends of, of the Classics and, and Team London to get people to volunteer to come and teach Latin. And I hope any listeners with, with Latin who want to get into schools and teach it uh, get onto our website because we are uh, actively engaged now in trying to, uh, to, in trying to spread Latin more widely in in, in schools in London. Yeah. Schools in London are improving the whole time and it's an amazing thing to, to watch but there's no reason at all why they shouldn't also have this uh, access, why access to a subject that is, you know, for, for most of our lifetime been pretty much res- increasingly reserved in the, in the fee-paying sector. That strikes me as being completely wrong. It's, a fa- it's an mm. amazing discipline. Uh, people love it and, you know, the, can I tell you, the, the, the permanent undersecretary at the Treasury, a guy who who you know was responsible for the stewardship of our entire financial uh, future is is he studied absolutely nothing else for but Latin and Greek for most of his academic career. Latin and Greek sets you off. Look at me, I run every bus in London. Did nothing but Latin and Greek. Uh, it's fantastic. It is a it is a fantastic. Chloe, what do you want to do with your life? Discipline. Do you know yet what your career might be? Um, I'm possibly interested in law, but I know that classics does open up such a large, uh, a, sure. such a large range of job opportunities. And how many girls or pupils in your set or class or group or whatever you call there it? There are two. Just two. two. Well, good Just for you. Two. Is that Gosh. Chloe and Isabel? Yeah. Chloe and Isabel. Yeah. Good for you. Good luck. You won't. You won't look back. You won't regret it. And, and can I say so? May, may we have the teacher's name, or would he rather, de- or she rather, decline? It's he. It's- One second, I'll just ask him. 
simply doesn't exist. Well, you say to, you say you say you say gratias. He doesn't want to be mentioned. Grat, gratias gratias is... tibi agimus magister. That's what you say to him. <laughs> well done, Mr. Which means Mayor. thank you, teacher. Thank you very much indeed. Slightly stronger on the Latin than you were on the Mandarin. Um, seriously, by anyone's account, you are a successful individual politically, journalistically, and you're an author as well. Do you think you wouldn't have achieved some of that without Latin, genuinely? I I loved it. I just remember. I didn't actually start it until quite late because I didn't get into to the English school system until, until quite late. Um, but I remember thinking that I, I just loved it. I remember thinking I'd, al- I'd always known it. It was weird. And it was, um, yeah, it was yeah. completely eye-opening for me. We've only got a minute of your time. Why? One, what's that? Are we, uh, we've got to go. I'm told you're going. At, uh, yes, I'm told. No. Yes, you are. We've got yes, one more we've call. Got to go. We've got to go. We've got to go. We've got to go and plug the poppy appeal. But can you do one more call? Go. Have you got yes, time quick, for one quick. more call? I, I think so, yeah. Yeah, one yeah, more quickly. call. Yes, we're getting thumbs Mark, up. One Mark, more in, Mark in Twickenham. Thanks, Chloe, by the way. Sorry. Thanks, Chloe. Thank Mark, you, Chloe. go ahead. Uh, a question in a sentence, if you would, sir, please. Good morning, Prime Minister Johnson. I beg your pardon, Mayor Boris. Good morning, Mayor. Um, Boris, could you look into the public carriage office for black cab licensing? It's taking anywhere between two and a half to three weeks to two and a half to three yeah. months to renew our Criminal Records Bureau, please. OK. And um, by the way, I passed last night in Newgate Street. You'd need a light on the back of your bike. You're, 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 uh, can I... Uh, 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 Mark, uh, thank you very much. Mr. That was, Mayor. That, no, I'm, I'm, I've got to fess up to that. My, it, this uh, battery has temporarily... I pegged out on my backlight, and I, I'm going to have to put my hands up to that. Uh, so you were cycling without a light? I, no, I had a front light that was working no, very no, no, well, no. but my backlight... You were cycling without a rear light? Without a functioning rear light. Which is a clear contravention of the law. I, Mark's got me banged to rights. I'm not going to deny it. You didn't it's, try and get your bicycle through any gates, did you, that weren't... I didn't, you? but I, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I can tell you that it's all hands on deck trying to get a battery into that backlight I've got uh, something today. in my bag, I'll help. Anyway, uh, back and to on the, the public morning. carriage office, uh, Mark, uh, I'm sure we'll get onto it immediately, and, and we'll make sure that, uh, that TFL do everything okay, we'll get a response they can to, to sort you out. Yes, that has caused a lot. I'm sure they will. We might chase your office tomorrow for that. Uh, lastly, we need Plebgate wrapped up. When did you last speak to Sir Bernard Hogan? How about this? I don't like to go into my conversations with the Commissioner about every aspect of policing. How important the is this? But I, 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 you, you can take it that it has been raised by me or by Stephen Greenhouse, Deputy Mayor for Policing and Crime, at, I think, virtually every meeting we've had. How important with, is it for London this is wrapped up the, now? Uh, uh, with the Commissioner. And I, indeed, if, if you looked at the recent... Um, uh, uh, Mopac challenge that we had in City Hall, where we we go through how the police are doing. Uh, Stephen Greenhalgh and I, that Plebgate was very high on our on our agenda. It is important that it's wrapped up. Uh, I want to see it knocked on the head. I saw what the uh, the DPP had to to say about it, and uh, I hope that I hope that you know things things reach a conclusion as fast as possible get involved plant those trees get on our website trees. we'll we'll give you the link to that of course and the mayor of johnson leaves us now to go and get a battery for his light ask boris with mayor boris johnson shall return travel follows this nick ferrari at breakfast on lbc 97.3 with go to meeting get started with online meetings today you too could live in blackheath village with as little as a fifteen thousand.